good day and welcome back so today we're going to be talking about arrays in go programming language so this is chapter three arrays and slices but we're going to start off by talking about arrays now if you've never played with arrays or don't know what an array is don't worry this is going to be a very hands-on live coding ex example so you'll get to see it pretty soon but just so that you get a heads up Arrays and goals are built-in types that allow you to store multiple values of the same type. Remember when we talk about data type, we're talking about things like an integer, a string, boolean, uh, float. Those are our data types that we've covered before. So being able to store in one variable multiple values of that same type with its multiple strings, like you can imagine you wanted to store several names within in one variable, that's what an array gives you. And we'll see how exactly you're gonna do that. Some other benefits are bounce checking at compile time and runtime. And again, this is gonna make sense when you see the code if you don't know any, what this means. Um, non -negative, not being able to use non-negative value for your index and zero base indexing. We're gonna explain everything. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start up my uh, Visual Studio Code Editor, uh, which is what I'm using for Go programming. And it looks like I have some update here and there's an update for G Google Go. So I'm gonna reload and do that. All right, so that should be done quickly. So, all right, fine. So let's do this. So I'm gonna start with main.go. And what is an array? So we often wanna use an array um, to hold a collection of values. So in this example, we want to demonstrate using uh, strate demonstrate using arrays to hold a collection of values uh, of the same type. Well, that's important, and I'll get back to that soon. So, um, of course, package main and function main is how we always start our Go programming. We say log. Um, print ln and we're going to say introduction to arrays. Come on, introduction to arrays. All right, that's good enough. And so let's make sure that at least runs. Um, I know why my, um, so say go run and main and that runs and that's fine. So how do we define an array? So, very simple. Let's imagine that what we wanted to do is we want to have a number of test results. So let's do some functions actually. Um, so now that we know about functions, let's do a function called print test result. And this function is going to have a number of arrays for tests. So imagine that we have a set of numbers. So we have 12, 53, 86, 94, 75, and maybe 103. And those represent some number from something. We ran a test and those are the numbers we collected. Maybe how long something took, whatever. How many items were generated. But we wanna be able to put that in an array. Now one way is we can say var you know, test result one equals to 12, and then var test result two equals to 53, and keep going like that. But then when, we come, when it comes time for us to use them, um, you know, if you have to print out the results, so fmt that print line, um, you know, test result one, you know, we'll have to do something like test result one. And then, of course, you can imagine um, we have to do the same thing over and over. And that doesn't look that great. Um, each variable had to have a, its own name for something that seems to be related. And these are all test results. So we really like is some data type that allow us to stick all of these together and maybe give us a nice convenient way of accessing each individual one. Um, so if we think of this as being in a collection of some sort, like a bucket together, and then somehow we can kind of identify each one by just an index. Now, let me just say this. If you think about how memory, and we talked about memory before, and how each memory location 
um, it has its own um, unique address, right? And you know, it's byte addressable, and so you can number each memory location. It almost seems like that's what we want, right? If we could somehow think of this as being somewhere in memory, and I could say this is at memory location zero of wherever, this is item zero of wherever all this is stored, and this is item one of wherever it's stored and item two, and have Go language take care of you know, skipping over enough bytes. If this is four bytes or eight bytes, then fine. Even though I say I want the first one or the second one, it should skip over enough bytes to get to them. And if I store not only numbers, but strings, for example, it would be smart enough to skip over sufficient bytes or float or any data type, right? So we always want to be able to store the same data type. So how might we do it? So that's called an array. So a data type that allows you to do this is called an array. And the way you define an array is you say, Square bra um, so as usual in Go, you want to save the type, the variable name, sorry, followed by the type. So you say square bracket means array. And how many elements I want to store in my array? Let's say I want to store 10, and the type I want to store is int. So that gives me right there a way to be able to say I have an array or this data type. And so my test result is an instance or a variable that has this data type of 10 integers. You can store 10 integers. And um, let's call this test results. And now I can print out test results. Okay, test results. And let's just run our code and see what we get. And so that's save. And oh, um, FMT, oh, did that? Oh, I did not call my function. Uh, Bam. So we got to call this function if we want it to be able to get executed. And so let's do it again. We're waiting for it to save there. And bam, look at that. So I didn't have to access individual members. This uh, was smart enough to print out. And notice how it gives me an array of 10 elements. Each thing is called an element. And they were initialized to zero, consistent with how Go um, initializes your variable to a default value and is the zeroed value for certain things. So numeric values can get zero, um, you know, booleans are going to be like false, uh, strings are going to be empty strings, that sort of thing. Pointers are going to be nil. All right, <clears throat> so this is a sort of a good start. We, we have this collection now with these 10 things in them, these 10 elements. Um, now we want to be able to access each one. How might we do that? So we do test results, square bracket again, and then we put the offset for the element we want to access. And so let's try this. Let's put one here equals to some number. Okay, let's see. Let's try 12, right? So we're thinking maybe in the first location, we're going to put 12. And so let's see what happens when we rerun our program. And so we run it and notice what happened. 12 shows up not in the first element, but rather in the second one. So what this tells us is that arrays in Go are zero base index. So the first element is at index zero, the second element is at index one, and therefore the very last one is at the length of the array minus one, which in our case for this 10 element array is gonna be at element nine. So what we really want here is this to be zero and of course let's uh, go through and follow the rest of our array and so we're going to put one two three four and so let's see we have 53 86 94 75 and we need one more and that was one or three and this is what's at index five. So we really have six values here. And so if we let that save and rerun our code, there we go. There is the first one. So we have four empty spaces we haven't used yet. So maybe we thought about we're gonna need 10 test results and so far we've collected six. And we can easily print it out. So you see how much easier this is to work with than if we had to have the individual variable name that uses, for example, the index of the, on the variable name itself. 
this is certainly easier to work with. And we're going to see once we learn about looping, which is, you know, the for loop, how we can easily loop over a data structure like a collection, like an array. And later on when we learn about maps, you can see how we can easily loop over that. And a few videos from now, or the next video, we're going to start learning about slices. And you're going to see how we can literally slice and dice, no uh, pun intended, this um, ar arrays. Okay, so that's a nice way to start off. So we have this array, and we've been able to initialize it. We've put some value in. So let's see what else we can do. Now, what about, so it looked like we, everything started off at index zero. What about if we put minus one? What does that um, do for us? And so we let that save, but notice we got an error here even before we even run our code. And it says index must be non-negative. So we can see already that the validation is not working and the code is not gonna run. So, um, so non-negative index is not a go. So it must be positive and start from zero. What about if we did 10, okay? Now remember, the last element here is nine. It's doing zero base indexing. So 10 should be outside of the array. Now, here again, we, we see that oh, this is warning us that's outside of um, the range of the array, out of bounds, right? So the bounds of the array is from zero to nine. And what I wanna pause here and say, this is very important because in languages, and again, Go is a C-like language. It's in the vein of C, it's in that generation of C. And in C, C++, you have been able to allocate an array of 10 elements and be able to use negative one or 10, something that's outside the bounds of it because bounds are not checked in you know, the arrays there. Now they added collection type in C++, that would do bounds checking, but just a basic array that looks sort of like this in C and C++. So those are unsafe arrays. Now they do have some nice capabilities being able to access something out of bounds, but it also allows for some very dangerous programs. And um, there've been a number of issues and major application problems where people have had, um, you know, the index go outside of bone because you can overwrite parts of memory that you just did not allocate, right? Um, so just take um, comfort in knowing that though go is really, when you define an array of a fixed size, go is really tracking and helping you work with um, how you access this. Now, this is a compile time um, error that we have here. You know, it's able to see that though 10 was outside of bone. What if it, we wanted, what if we wanted to use a variable like i? So we say that our var i, or you know, maybe we could do the shorthand, i colon equals to four. And so that can, it, it, should, it should work, right? You know, i is just an integer and it's four. And of course we can see that um, that works just fine in setting 103, or maybe um, we can overwrite something else and put this as 408, for example. And let's rerun the code once it's saved, and there we go. And so 4, 8 is at index location 4, element 5, essentially. And what about if we try to do what we did before and put 10 in there? Is Go going to be smart enough to actually see that i is equal to 10, and then we're trying to use high here? And as you can see, it can probably do some syntax static analysis and figure this out, but really this becomes a runtime error that we're gonna have because we could have started out with four, but then while the program is running, kept incrementing i, which is one of the ways we're gonna be able to, to navigate an array and you know end up outside of the bounds, either with a negative number or with a positive number that's great larger than the bounds of the array. And in which case, our program is gonna compile fine. And when we try to run it, um, you're gonna see we're gonna have a runtime error. And so here our program panics and died and it told us um, you know, exactly at which line number um, it had the issue, which is line 24. And as you can see, here's line 24 because we tried to access an array um, out of bound. Okay, so again, um, you can, and we have not talked about how to panic and recovery, how you can recover from something like this at runtime, but just know that oh, you still don't get around 
the size of your array even if you use an integer. So all that happens is if it's not caught at run at compile time, it's going to cause an issue at runtime. And you certainly would rather your program crash than it try to assign 408 to whatever memory location is next to this array because you do not know what is there. It could be something else that's very important. So you don't want to overwrite that thing. Now, um, this is just an introduction to arrays in Go. And I'm going to stop here. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, I'm sort of going back to the more live coding. Um, I think um, this is going to allow me to put out videos faster than when I spend a lot of time trying to prepare slides and so on. Um, and so I think you guys um, deserve to get the video more often, at least once a week or even more than once video a week, than have to wait so long for me to prepare it. Okay, so let's wrap up. So in summary, what we did today, we look at how you declare an array, and it's pretty simple. Um, it's var, name of the identifier variable you want to use, and then the type. And for an array, you have this introduction of before the type that is being stored in the array, you have the um, square brackets that says this means array, and then within the square bracket is how many elements you want. So. For us, it was open square bracket 10, close square bracket, and then the type that's going to be stored in that array, which for this example, we did integer. Access an element of the array, and so we clearly created, what we did was create a 10 element array, and access an, an element, you use the index. Index is zero base, and of course, the last element of that array is going to be one less than the total number of elements in the array. So for example, of 10 element array, the last element is at index 9, and the first is at index 0. We also saw that the Go does bounce checking, and so and it also does not allow you to do um, a negative value for the index. A minus 1 would mean something before index 0, and that is outside the bounce, and it checks that when you use a constant for either something that's outside either side of the boundary, whether it's um, on the left hand side you know lower value by minus a negative number or on the other end which is greater than the length of the the last element it checks that and even if you try to use a variable as we saw in the example um, you do not get a runtime error because it doesn't know what the value of the variable could be later on in the code so it can't really warn you about that or make that an error at compile time so that's why that becomes a runtime error but again you see it how it protects you from accessing those values that are outside the bounds so I hope you find this um, engaging and at least, um, you know, uh, you learned something. Um, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. And thank you for coming back and sticking with me. And I'll be putting out, like I said, videos more often now because I'll go back to a more life coding style of videos that I start out with instead of, you know, the heavily um, presentation style and having to spend so much time present, preparing material. So see you in the next video very, very soon. Uh, take care and try it out. If you have problems, let me know. Spread the word. Have a great day. Bye.